All right, so we're looking at Snell's law today. Now, Snell, well, I don't remember his full name, but Snell, he came to this a study, right? So he, he was able to measure the incident light rays and refracted light rays quite accurately with regards to refraction, right? But interestingly, what happens is that when you measure incident light rays and, and refracted light rays, you end up getting a relationship such as this. It's an exponential curve, okay? So with that exponential curve, obviously we can't really predict very easily from curves, okay? Now, in order for Snell to actually find a prediction, we do what every other mathematician in the world is also like, likes to do. We try to create a line graph out of it. Okay, so what he proposes is that in order to create a curved graph into a line graph, is you use sine. So when you take the sine of these two types of angles, you get a linear relationship. Okay. Once you've got that linear relationship, actually, you you get a quite a nice, or you get a nice thing in order to predict. Now you can actually predict what would happen if you were to say set an angle of incidence, and then you'd be able to calculate exactly what type of refraction you'd get, and which is very very interesting and has also been a major hallmark for modern day optics, because with all camera lenses, you guys all take pictures with cameras and you take all sorts of selfies and you use it for video calling and everything. Those lenses are not made just by eye, as in there's no one sitting there polishing a lens going, ooh, this works nicely, this one works nicely, and then this one needs some work. They use computers, they use computer modeling in order to create the specific shape of lens which they need. And by using essentially the, the full pre precursor of almost all modern optics, which is Snell's law. Okay. Now, what is interesting about this is that essentially the, how we can find that type of graph is then we can actually use an equation like this. I will read it out as well. So, the equation for Snell's law is that n1 is equal to sine theta i equals n2 sine theta r. So that's how you would write it down. Okay. n1 is the um, optical density of the first medium. So if we're going from something like air into water, then N1 would be air, N2 would be water, and we would have essentially the change in optical densities. Obviously, sine uh, theta i would be the angle of incidence, and theta r would be the angle of refraction, and therefore the sine is sine. Okay, now this is quite interesting because now we can actually use this equation to predict things. So this equation can be used to predict our either our if we know the optical density of the second medium, we know the optical density of the first medium, then we we can measure the incident light ray. We can calculate the refracted or the angle of refraction. And essentially, because we have four unknowns in this equation, you can be given or any of those three to calculate the last one. Okay, so. As you can see, this is a quite a nice simple equation, especially for Snell. And essentially, you can use the gradient of the graph as it's the constant, so that is the relationship between the two optical media. Okay.